Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student, and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the basic integration rules out there. Here we're looking at an example of antiderivatives, also known as indefinite integrals, and in order to, to do these, and to run the derivatives backwards basically, we have to understand a few basic integration rules, and these are pretty much proven from the fact that the, the integral is an antiderivative. So think about things that are legal and things that you do with derivatives and run them backwards and you can pretty much put these together for yourself. Um, the most basic rule is called the simple power rule and it states that if we take the integral, there's integration symbol here, this large s symbol, integral of x to the nth power dx and that states that in order to run an antiderivative what we have to do is add 1 to the exponent, x to the n plus 1 since the derivative subtracts 1, an antiderivative adds 1 to the exponent. And then to balance the coefficient, we need to divide by that new exponent n plus 1. And then we have this plus c quantity here. And that's called the arbitrary constant. And when you run an antiderivative, you have to make sure that you include that because there's a slight problem. In the, the derivative rules, the derivative of a constant is 0. So when we run a derivative backwards, when we do an antiderivative, we're, we can't be sure what the constant term was to begin with. So, so to hold the place of it there, we make sure we put this plus c, we usually call it c, and that's called the arbitrary constant. And then there is one exception to the simple power rule that we see here, if you think about it, if your exponent is negative 1, then you can't use the basic power rule because that's going to result in division by 0, which is undefined. So, But for any other exponent, whether it's uh, a positive integer, a negative integer, a rational exponent, as long as the, the exponent is not negative 1, the simple power rule works. So we're going to, that's the, that's the fundamental rule that we need here. And then there are a few other ones. The the constant rule is just a special case of, of the simple power rule. When we take the integral of a constant dx, we notice this differential here, that when you first start doing integrals, it may seem like it's not doing much at all. It's, it's critically important, as it turns out. So early on, I just advise people to just get in the habit of writing it, and then it starts to become apparent that that actually is a factor, and that it does do something in the integral. But, but for now, understand that an integral without the differential um, in it doesn't mean anything actually. So, so we have our function times dx inside of the integral. So the integral of a number times dx or kx to the 0 by the power rule is kx to the first over 1 plus c. And so, so we call that the constant rule. This might be the one place at the moment where the differential is doing something because there's no variable in the function. So so that tells you that the antiderivative is in a function of x because of the dx here in our differential. And then the other rules that are shown here apply to antiderivatives because they're true for derivatives as well. There's a constant multiple rule. It says that I can have a constant factor either inside or outside of the integral. I can remove it from the integral if I wish or put it in there if it's helpful inside of it. And then the sum and difference rule, we have that we can differentiate terms independently and we can do integrals of terms independently too. So we could split it up into two integrals as we see here if we wish to do that. So, so pretty much those are all going to be used here at some point in this example. This is a polynomial case, very typical. We have a cubic here, 12x to the third plus 3x squared minus 5 times dx. Um, a little bit of vocabulary here before we get going. The function that we're going to take the antiderivative of is called the integrand. And then we have our integration symbol. That's over here on the left. It's, it's kind of a big S. You want to practice drawing those a little bit for yourself. Uh, it, it actually is a large S, as it turns out. It stands for summation, and we can discuss that later. And make sure that you always include your differential at the end also. So whatever the variable is inside of your integrand function, that's the variable that you want in your differential. So since it's a function of x, I'm using dx. If it was a function of t, I'd use dt function of w, I'd use dw, and so on. And again, just kind of get in the habit of writing it for now, and it'll become apparent that that actually is a factor. Uh, but honestly, 
I always tell people new to integration, it seems like it's not doing anything. But just write it. Start with some good habits here as we start this, this whole new world of integration. Now, if we do this kind of the long version for the first time, what we're going to do is apply the sum and difference rules first. We, we see here we have three terms in the integral. And so I'm going to write that as three separate integrals. Integral of 12x to the third. If you notice, since the, these are all a factor in the integrand, the dx factor is being distributed through. So each of these smaller integrals has a dx factor as well. So then my second one will be plus the integral of 3x squared dx minus the integral of 5 times dx. So when we discuss the sum and difference rule, that's what we mean. We're just we're basically going to apply the integral to each term independently. And what you find out is many times we don't actually physically write it as separate integrals. Just like with derivatives, we just understand that we're allowed to integrate terms uh, independently, which is definitely not true for factors. Next, I'm going to use the constant multiple rule here for a couple of the terms. Many times we have the coefficient of x to a power. So if I wish, this is what the constant multiple rule says. I can take the factor of 12 out of the integral if I want to and write that as 12 times the integral of x to the third dx. Similarly here we have 3 times the integral of x to the second dx minus the integral of 5 times dx which is a constant. So now we can go ahead. The first two terms are going to be examples of the simple power rule. So we see here on the first one we have x to the third. So the integral of x to the third dx is x to the fourth divided by 4. And we have our constant multiple of 12 here on the outside. So this is 12x to the fourth over 4. Now technically we would have a plus c here but then we would have one for each of the three integrals. And so what, what happens here is that three arbitrary constants, when you add them together, are just some other arbitrary constant. So ultimately what we do is we, we just don't write them till the very end. So when we're all done, we're just going to make sure we don't forget to put a plus c on the end of this thing because they're all going to be combined. So our second term is the integral of x squared. So we have 3 times x to the third over 3. And then the third integral is an example of the constant rule. Here we have the integral of just a number times dx. So that tells me that my antiderivative is 5x. And then, then I'm going to tack on the arbitrary constant at the end, the plus c. So with a little bit of practice, and not, not a whole lot of practice probably, in a case like a polynomial, you might find yourself just kind of jumping to to the antiderivative and understanding that I am applying the constant multiple rule and the sum and difference rule here if I wish. But you don't have to physically write out those integrals. Uh, you might be busy and don't have time for that anyway, right? So, so we finish up by simplifying here. So you have 3x to the fourth plus 1x to the third minus 5x plus c. And when you have the arbitrary constant plus c there, we call this the general form of the antiderivative. Technically, there are infinitely many antiderivatives. They all just differ by that constant term. Um, but for now, that'll be good enough. And if you want to confirm your answer, you can always just go ahead and run a derivative of your antiderivative as your check. So if we do that, we see that our antiderivative's derivative is 12x to the third plus 3x squared minus 5. And the derivative of a number is 0. And we applied all those rules that we learned back when we did derivatives, sum and difference rule and all that stuff. And that goes back to our original integrand, and that tells us that we're, we're correct here. So the polynomial is a very important basic case of the antiderivative and the indefinite integral notation. So, so you, you should practice there. Start there and get good at it, and then you can move on to integration is not differentiation, um, as you're going to find out. So you definitely want to keep up on things in practice, and there's a lot of tricks to learn as we move forward. But this is where it all starts, the basic integration rules.
If you'd like to learn more about taking integrals or calculus in general, you can find those on my textbooks available on Amazon for a nice price. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And until next time, I'm Pete Clark.